Hey everyone, so it was a really, really good day. Up 10%. Um, as the stock market sold off after the Federal Reserve came out with what is called a hawkish position, um, believing that the economy is soaring and that they are t not going to be cutting as many times in 2024. Obviously, all of this prognostication is all wrong, but that's okay because the economy is about ready to fall off a cliff. So what we've got going on is debt is soaring. We've Debt has increased by $1 trillion in the last three months. We have a wide open border with massive sums of people simply pouring into the United States. Um, and unrest and civil unrest will be rampant here very, very soon. We basically have a democracy that is in tatters um, and is at risk of complete and utter failure. We have a 10-year note that is above 4.3% um, and climbing rapidly. We have oil that somehow dropped to $90 a barrel on its way to 110, but that's gonna take us a little bit of time. The reason for that is that as we, as interest rates soar, um, the cost of being able to do any business soars with it. So what happens is you need a, co a, a, a corresponding ROI in anything in business. So it is what it is. And this will all catch up with us. The auto strike reduces gross domestic product. Boeing has paused several of its production lines and airplanes are the number one value of gross domestic product. If we cannot be producing airplanes, then we're not adding anything to our GDP, are we? Labor unrest will spiral out of control. It was finally announced that the reason that the UAW is striking is that Stellantis wants to close 18 facilities in the United States and get rid of all those people. They don't just don't need them any longer. There's all kinds of technology available to be able to take some of these jobs. Good, dependable technology. So at the end of the day, the American worker has got their back up against the wall and because they don't get it, um, everybody that they interview on the news when you watch it, um, they always interview people who sit there and say, yeah, it's so tough to make ends meet. It's so tough to be able to go on vacation. They're working us so hard. We work so much overtime and we still don't have any money. So we need more. They need to pay us more because for some reason we deserve to have money, even though we suck at managing our money because we have none. Um, I think it's very, very funny. Um, none of the people that they're interviewing um, that are on strike are in any way, shape, or form starving to death, it seems. They seem to be pretty well taken care of. Um, and the mentality is that from the young new hires, that's where the problem is. It's not about the old folks. They get it. It's the young folks, the fo folks with less than five years in. And they're like, oh, heck no, now's our time. We want to get as much as we can. So as the auto strike goes on right now, its impact on GDP is a small sum. But also GDP is going to be rewritten. It has to be lowered. It's been on a government spreadsheet going up all of the time that Joe Biden's been president, which has all been fictitious and a lie. But now we're finding out that GDP is in really bad shape. The problem with that is that as spending soars, the percentage of debt to GDP also is changing rapidly, which is devaluing the dollar, which is why other, the BRIC countries, all want to come up with their own denominated value. It makes perfect sense. The risk in the dollar is just phenomenal at this point. So 
we have this very, very difficult position. And that's why by being long, you can see that I'm long Amazon. You can see that I'm long Caterpillar. You can see that I'm, or I'm sorry, I'm, that was the wrong terminology to use. I'm short Amazon with the put, the 137 put. I'm short Caterpillar with the 280 put. I am short Walt Disney with the 85 put. And I'm short Meta Platforms with the 300 put. Now I've only got in this account, it's a small sum of money, only 11,446. But as you see, I am up 14.46% for the month, which is exactly what I've been trying to teach myself to be able to do. Tomorrow at the open, I'm going to be up even higher. I believe that I have 12,400 coming. So I have another thousand dollars roughly in this market meltdown. Now, what am I seeing in the spreadsheet? Why is this market, what's the spreadsheet telling me? So let's go into there, shall we? Yep, Christmas is coming early. Oh, and Christmas sales this year are projected to be way, way down. 299.67 is where Meta closed at. 299.67. So, and Meta's low point was 299.43.44. That's fine. High point was 308. So 299.67, you can see that Meta here has broken, has weakened from its green channel. If we were to scroll back up a little bit more, you would see that Meta was in a nice green channel while the price was going up. But then it started breaking down. It got to that 310 and it started breaking down strongly. It popped back up. We had that big rally but now it's falling back apart. 98.75 is actually the lowest number on, on Meta, 98.75. And then if you look, we now have some good data sets on what to expect from our gain and what to expect from our loss. So when it broke green, what we were expecting, you can do the math, if we do the math, we were looking at uh, 0.8344, divided by 0.8317. We were looking for a 3.24, 32, oh, that's interesting, 3246, which was the address of my dad's auto shop when he died. That's very interesting. It's fun how dad stops by and sees me from time to time. Um, 3246. Thank you, Dad. It's great to have you here. Thanks for reaching out and touching me. I truly appreciate it. Tells me I'm on the right track. Wow. Back to the video here. February 5th, 1981 was when he passed away. He passed away at the age of 42 of stomach cancer. Hi, Pud. So back to our math here. Um, we're, so we're expecting a drop of 3.246% or a gain. Sorry, we were looking at a gain because that was a breakout at that time. From 302.55, 302.55 by 3.246%. Point two four six percent We were looking for a gain on Meta to 312. That's why that 311.26 comes in there. But Meta today completely broke down. Completely broke down and gave us new skill set or new numbers to be able to tell us how far it's going to drop. So 0.8344 divided by 0 0.8299, 0 0.8299, 
we're looking for a 5.4% drop in Meta. which is a drop in Meta down to 288.59, which is where that 289 comes in. So needless to say, when I seen Meta fall apart, I stepped in and I bought two options at the market, and I have no gain on them yet. That was towards the end of the market day. I had a very busy day this, you know, today. I had a doctor's appointment, all is good. So Meta is breaking down. Pretty comfortable with my Meta Short. Exxon Mobil breaking down, NVIDIA breaking down, um, Broadcom still in rally mode, but I didn't run the data for today. Adobe, of course, is breaking down. Everything's breaking down. I haven't finished the spreadsheet on you know, some of these. I just don't like watching, and I'm doing well anyway watching what I watch. So we'll scroll back over the spreadsheet here. Bear with me. And then we're going to scroll up to the ones that I kind of do watch and see what we got going on here. This is AXP. If we come into here and punch in AXP, which is American Express credit cards. All the people aren't paying their credit cards any longer. And if we come in and we look at what it did today, um, we don't have the data for today, but it's breaking out of its trend. And if we did run the data, it would be bad because it's down to 157 from 159 the day before. Here's Oxy, as we know, oil is breaking down. If we were to punch in today's close on Oxy, 6425, 64.25, breaking down. That's 1.06. It's getting lower and lower. We can do the math and find out what we're breaking down to. I'm not a huge fan of buying anything long right now. Microsoft. Microsoft got crushed today. And I did sell my Microsoft shares. I would like to buy them back, um, but I got triggered out of them. I didn't get in there and change since I was at the doctor. I didn't get in there and change my sell order. I made good money on it, but oh well, I'm back negative Microsoft. Um, and today it closed at 320.77. Its low was 320.51. Let's punch that in. And then 320.77. And you can see how bad things are in Microsoft. 0 0.9902, color this red. It has broken down out of its run. It is in a confirmed bear. And if we run our math here, we can see 0.8336 divided by 0.8285. We're looking for a 6.15% drop in Microsoft, 6.15, 328 by 6.15% minus, we're looking for a drop in Microsoft down to 308. It's 320 right now. I feel sorry for anybody owning Microsoft. Uh, Apple, we haven't looked at Apple yet. Let's take a look at what Apple did today too. It got crushed. The American consumer just isn't there and they're admitting it finally. Yeah, there's nobody buying anything because everybody's having to pay back their school loans. Uh, of course, so Joe Biden will come out and say, oh, the government's gonna go and just pay your student loan off for you. Um, that'll be next. Um, so we had a low of 175.40. And we closed at 175.49. What do we have? So we have Apple and its confirmed rally. So we can't go short Apple. So that's why I'm not short Apple, but it's a very, very weak rally. You can see that this 0 0.8348, 8331, 
we're looking for a drop in Apple to like 174, but I believe that it goes further than that because it's just getting started on its run down. Boeing, things have been exceptionally difficult over at Boeing. Press hasn't been talking about it at all. It is exceptionally bad at Boeing. Uh, Boeing was 202. Its low for the day was 202.31. Let's punch that in. And it closed at 202.37. And as you can see, again, there is no reason to be buying anything. Um, one of the big financial institutions came out today and said, Oh, we're long Boeing. That's like, oh, how stupid is that? Amazon. I am short Amazon. So let's take a look at what Amazon did. Amazon and punch its numbers in here. Its low for the day was 135.20. 135.20 and it closed the day at 135.29. And as we can see, Microsoft has completely broken down out of its green trough into the red. That's why I've been short Microsoft and the gain in Microsoft was very nice from the short perspective. We can do the math. This math is not good either. 0.8351 divided by 0.8276. We're looking for a 9% drop in um, Microsoft, a 9% drop in Microsoft, a 9, or no, I'm sorry, we're sorry, we're Amazon. A 9% drop in Amazon, a 9% drop in Amazon, it's very late here, 9% drop in Amazon, 137 by 9% minus, we're looking for a drop in Amazon to 124.67. You might think, you know, how is it possible? It's Amazon for gosh sakes, but it's getting very late and it's hard to do this when I'm this tired. If we scroll back up in Amazon, you'll see that it's been 120. We're just giving back what it gained, but it's breaking down. It's definitely in its breakdown mode, so I am short Amazon. I believe that if it goes to 124, I have the 137 puts. Do you realize how much in the money my 137 puts is going to be if it drops to 124? That's going to be a massively profitable trade. Um, and then looking at CAT... It's the last stock for this video here for tonight. That way I can go to bed because I am exhausted. You can hear it in my voice. Hired a new guy today um, or this week, and he has been phenomenal in my business units. And uh, I'm going to be taking him out and working him for four hours on Saturday. Um, and uh, just looking forward to it. Good kid. Young kid. 19, 20 years old. In, uh, in, in enrolled at St. Clair College, and he trades things like I do too. He, he does fossils and shark teeth and all kinds of stuff like that. I guess there's a market for that kind of stuff. But we're looking at, where are we at? We're looking at CAT. And CAT is at a low of 278. Look at that, 278.02. And a high of 286. That was a massive bad day for cat today. Massive bad day for cat. Um, and if we put in its close, its close was 278.61. Caterpillar has completely broken down the cost of steel, the cost of labor, the cost of everything, and farming is slowing tremendously on the globe. All of the infrastructure stuff is just slowing. All the spending on heavy equipment is slowing tremendously as the economy goes into recession. And the uh, Caterpillar has tremendously broken down. Now, the problem that we have here, notice 0 0.8312839, this column here. Right? We don't. We have actually a gain that we're expecting Microsoft, or, um, Caterpillar to be up a little bit tomorrow. 
And so if we see that in our bid ask down here, um, 278.49, we're not expecting that much of a drop tomorrow at the open on CAT so far. So my long on CAT, which is the longest position I have, the four position, is not going to be up very much. As a matter of fact, right now, I've only got it projected to be up. Um, if you'll think about CAT at 278, 61 cents by four is about $240. That's what I'm expecting this to be up tomorrow. Um, but we'll see what happens uh, overnight in this trade in Caterpillar. They're trying to save Caterpillar because Caterpillar is a big part of the Dow. Boeing is a smaller part of the Dow, and Boeing's already gotten crushed. But once they turn Caterpillar over like they did Deer, this was a massive day here, 286 to 278. That was a massive day for a large cap stock. It was a hell of a lot of selling going on. Um, that trend continues, as we've seen it in the tech sector. We're expecting some blood in the streets here soon. When we think about the calendar and we look at the S&P 500 for the last 10 trading days of September, it is always down ever since the S&P got started. The last 10 days in September are always negative. So I feel pretty confident with my short position now and it's played out in the spreadsheet and saying, Brian, hey, you should feel pretty comfortable um, with your short position. I believe that there could be far more downside coming to this market, and we haven't even retested anything. We haven't had a good 10% sell-off in a very, very, very long time. We're due for one. We're up against the calendar. I think it's coming. The data sets are showing me to be at least short. So I hope that helps. Um, you know, thanks for letting me share this video with you. I realize on my YouTube channel um, that there is a lot of fluff here or hard stuff for you, especially if you're just looking at me as a realtor. Um, and I'm going to be fixing all of that as I go forward here into the new year. It's part of the business plan as well. Uh, but thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the market, any questions about your investments, be very careful at this point. I would highly suggest a GIC paying 5%. That's a massive rate of return and will be so much better than anything anybody else is going to be making. This market is selling off hard. Be prepared. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.